First thing on the docket is city contact updates. The same scene has played out once a week now for nearly two years. Nobody's coming to save us. That's one of our models. Concerned and committed North Metro citizens. We're it. It's grassroots. They can't stop us if we're grassroots. Who together make up ACIT. ACIT is uh, Noka County Election Integrity Team. All laser focused on a system that started with a bad feeling four years ago. There is a lot of support for Donald Trump here. Something stood out to you as being off uh, in 2020. I mean, so much so that you really became engaged. Yeah, some of the, the results just didn't seem like that should be. It's going to take time to count the votes. We're going to win Pennsylvania. I work as a financial analyst, so I count things for a living, and I'm looking at data and numbers. More Americans will vote by mail than ever before. I tracked the trends and when all the bellwether states and, and counties in the country kind of all blew up and didn't predict it properly. It made me wonder what did happen. And I'm looking at the battleground states, Florida, Iowa, Ohio, and Trump had large leads in there and I couldn't understand why they didn't call Florida. And then they call Arizona. I was an election judge for since the early 90s, which I found, you know, interesting. I found it odd that they, in one state, they stopped counting votes because the judges were tired and had to go home. That's not really how it works. As an election judge, there's usually another group that comes in or you stay, you don't just stop. I started doing my own research and paying attention and seeing things in other states. The most closely watched state at this hour is Georgia. That obviously didn't sound right. And I wondered, well, what's, what has happened to Minnesota? In my work, when something doesn't look right, we dig into it. And so that's what we did here is I started digging into it. And the more we dug, the more we found that stuff just isn't right. It's not jiving with our elections. So I thought I need to kind of get involved more and find out what's really going on. A group of four has grown to more than 20. So, I mean, more to come on that. From professionals in the medical field, engineers, accountants, and IT, their diverse skills have allowed them to dig in. Do we have problems with our elections in Minnesota? Well, the biggest problem for me is that so much of it is hidden. Should people trust the machines? I would say trust but verify, and we're not verifying. They focused first on cast vote records. The cast vote record, when the machine tabulates the vote, it produces a record afterwards and it shows you how those votes came in. So if something looks funny, you can analyze it and say, hey, I think, I think we have a problem here. In 2023, we were asking for cast vote records from Anoka County. In fact, we asked for them from 87 counties. They were saying they didn't exist, the machines weren't turned on, you can't get them. And then the state passed a law in May of last year saying public is not able to see these cast vote records. You need that cast vote record to see how it, how it got to the total. But the state then put a stop state to state took anyone. it away. And I think as a society, we just thought, well, we use computers for everything. Why not use it for this too? And I, I might even agree back in the day. I no longer agree anymore. We live in a world where people cheat in elections. It's been going on you know, since the beginning of elections. And we have to design a system that makes it difficult to cheat. It has to be decentralized. So Ramsey, where, which is where we're at now, they should hold their own elections and report the totals up. And it, none of that should have anything to do with electronics. That includes the, the poll pads that check you in, the machine tabulators that count the votes, anything should all be done by hand because we live in a world where people cheat. We don't really necessarily believe that they're purposely doing anything wrong, but we are very concerned that because it's gone from precinct now to county and now the state controls so much that they never used to control. The ballot boards, all the absentee ballots go to the county and the state. It used to come right to the precinct and we would just sit there and compare signatures right there. It was four or five absentee ballots, so it was easier to manage. Now we have tens of thousands sometimes coming in that way, they make it so difficult it would be hard to handle at the precinct level. So of course, just doing the absentee ballots in itself has made it even more complicated. When they pass election laws, they're supposed to be bipartisan, but that's not what's happening these last couple of years. They're just sweeping through this stuff. Another new Minnesota law, a residential address is no longer needed to register to vote. Instead, a voter can provide a physical description of their residence if they don't have a physical address. And if a precinct has used a machine before, it must stick with the machine moving forward. We're finding that they're making laws that are holding us back from hand coning. Every time we seem to make a step forward, a new law comes out that changes things for us. What does that say, though, the, the moves that the state has taken just within the last couple of years on the heels of the work you guys have been, been doing? It's concerning that we have in the legislature such a... Uh, shutting down attitude. 
about our elections. And, you know, it's two narratives. There's the narrative that says uh, people that are questioning this are election deniers. I would say we're election verifiers. Well, we just want to know that the people in, in elective office deserve to be there, and we just want more transparency, which we used to have decades ago, but it has gone away because of the outsourcing, uh, the machines. We can't even get the data to prove that it's, that it's correct or incorrect. In a statement to Alpha News, Minnesota's Secretary of State's office told us that one of its responsibilities is to ensure our state's election laws are maintained. As such, the office routinely advocates for updates on election laws as we learn new information on best practices in the field. On the subject of cast vote records, the office says that before 2023, there were no provisions in statute around cast vote records, which allowed for a variety of interpretation by jurisdictions across the state. Our office advocated for uniformity that would provide the public with all data that would not jeopardize the right to a secret ballot. And on machines, the state says ballot tabulators are considered best practice in elections as they are more accurate and efficient than hand counts. Minnesota has used ballot tabulators for decades. This equipment is certified by federal and state experts, tested locally before every election, and kept in secure locations. And more to come on that. We're going to keep talking to those guys. Still, ACIT believes their message is making a difference. We started to learn a lot. And in January of 20. Three, Anoka County voted to start uh, allowing citizen input. And so we could give speeches, two-minute speeches, and you could do up to five people. So we scheduled, we scheduled people for every two weeks. There was an increase of 611,000 votes for governor that year, a 30% increase. We ended up giving 80 speeches by 30 different people. They present their findings as consultants, never as a confrontation. The purpose of that is we didn't want Anoka County to be able to say, nobody ever told us. And we realized, honestly, how little they knew about elections, which was surprising to me. Alerting them to the issues of electronic voting and the solutions that are still available. They've taken that same strategy now to the 20 cities that make up Anoka County. If you choose to go electronic, you're bringing in all these software vendors into that process. So far, the cities of Oak Grove and Ramsey have voted to do a hand count of their election 10 days later, a post-election review or a PER. The way the elections are processed now is you vote, you stick your ballot in a machine, machine counts the votes, that's it, it's over. Well, if you extend the PER, what you're saying is we're going to take those ballots 10 days later and count them by hand and make sure the machine got the same. How big a win is that? Well, it's huge because they're first. And this is, a, this is a political movement. You know, we don't have lawyers, we don't have money, um, but we believe we have the people on our side at a national level, and we think we're, our message is resonating out here. Recent polling says only 20% of the public is very confident in the country's elections. There's a lot of people that know there's something going on, but it's just so big they don't know where to begin. So we do hope that slowly we can turn the tide. And there's a few cities that are finally jumping on board but there were times, you know, it was like, are, what we're doing, is it even, you know, is anybody even hearing us? I think so. We hope so. And maybe the right people. We'll see what happens tonight. We've come a long ways in two years. We've got a long ways to go. We're not going to stop. It has to be a grassroots political movement. It's probably not going to be a legal thing or it's not going to be a top down. It's going to be bottom up.